All right. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 15. When the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. And he answered them, Why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother. And whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So, for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Okay. So it, it makes it sound like the disciples are like kind of dirty and like they're not like paying attention to hygiene, right? And in this time when it's so important to wash our hands, people might read that and go, oh my gosh, they were filthy. Well, that wasn't the case. The, the point was that the Pharisees made this huge show out of washing their hands correctly. So their hands had to be out here like this, and somebody had to pour water off it. The water had to come off their hands, or else if it came back on them, they would remain to be unclean. And so it took forever to wash their hands, and they'd wash between, like, so they, they'd have their entree, they'd wash their hands. They'd have their main dish, they'd wash their hands. They'd have their, and they just wait. It was overkill of washing hands. And they made a big deal out of that. And yet, they didn't think anything when, um, when someone didn't take care of their mother or father, when they, they wanted to give money to the church and said, instead, that was like way more important to them because obviously they didn't value mother and father. They valued money more than anything. They were very greedy. So that was what that was all about. Verse 10. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? And he answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. And he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. So I love that, that Jesus was big on, hey man, you don't even just have to do an act to be guilty of it. You, you can think adulterous thoughts and be guilty, you know, be lustful and you, you're guilty of adultery. You can think angry thoughts towards someone, be guilty of murder. He reminds us, we have to watch what we think and how we feel. And, and I, I love this because it really, it, it hits me hard. And it's like, okay, I need to do a better job of this. And I, I think we all do because we kind of go naturally towards vengeance and just naturally towards earthly things. So, mm. and um the Pharisees were huge on, you know, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. And, and Jesus was like, you know, whatever God made, whatever my father made is, is good. And it's not about that. It's about what comes out of your mouth, not what goes into your mouth. So I think that's a really good, something that we all need to be thinking about. Because people get really caught up on, oh, you can't, it says you can't eat shellfish. It says that you can't eat pig. It says that you can't eat, you know, 
anything from the ocean that doesn't have scales on it. But it, it's not about that. Jesus called it back to the fact that, hey amen, it's not about what you put into your body, but what comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your heart. Verse 21. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, Is it not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Okay, so this is a, a really powerful paragraph that I think people misinterpret because it sounds like Jesus is ignoring her. He doesn't want to help her because she's a Canaanite. She, you know, she's a Gentile. And Gentiles were not looked on favorably by the Jewish people. And you see his disciples are like, send her away, man. She's bugging us. I mean, you can see them. They don't seem to have a lot of sympathy for the Gentiles at this point. And when he says to her, <laughs> even the dogs, you know, what is, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. So like he's talking to her like she's a dog. But when you look at the translation, he's actually talking to her in a loving way, like a, a little puppy, like, you know, He's looking at her more lovingly than, than how it comes across in this translation. And she's, she's so persistent because as all mothers and fathers know, I mean, if you have a child that's ill, you'll, you're not going to stop there. And she just keeps at him. And, and he finally says, yes, woman, your faith is so great. Be it done as you desire. And that's a beautiful picture of his mercy. And it tells us like, before him, it would have just been the Jewish people that would have been saved, but like, you know, they, they could be with God in heaven, but because of Jesus, all of us, we're all of the same family, and he loved us so much that he died for us, and it's just, it's a lot to take My, in. my yes. notes mentioned that she accepted his mission, even though she was a Gentile, she accepted him as the Messiah. Absolutely. She had faith in him. She knew he was the Messiah. She knew he could heal her. Thank you, Lou. Very help. This is very helpful to us as well because we're all Gentiles. <laughs> I assume, yeah. unless some of you are, are Israeli and I don't know it, but, <laughs> but we, are all, we are all Gentiles. We That's, are. So thank God. Thank God. <laughs> it's, it's a good Amen. Hope for us, huh? And Jewish people of that time would, would refer to Gentiles as a dog in a very vile and dirty way, like, you yeah. nasty dog. I mean, they really, like, would walk across the street, didn't even want to have to try to be in, you know, they, didn't, they, they thought we were disgusting. <laughs> Thank that's God. Why the, that's why the uh, parable of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the Samaritan? Samaritan was so amazing because they were hated yeah. by the by Jewish people. They were they were just it was a racial thing. I mean, they yeah. were totally racist against them. And so yeah. when Jesus made that guy the hero of the story, that was a big deal. Yes, yeah. I know. I love that story. Yeah, and it speaks to us today still. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> Verse twenty nine. Jesus went on from there and walked beside the Sea of Galilee. And he went up on the mountain and sat down. And great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put him at his feet and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of Israel, which Worse, and wouldn't you? I mean, if you're if you brought to him somebody who was riddled with 
with cancer who, who is going to die or someone who is in a wheelchair and he saw him walk, even if you weren't a believer before that, after seeing that, you would have to glorify him. And, and, I, and I love that picture of him. I mean, he didn't turn down anybody. People came to him with needs. He immediately healed and fixed and loved on people. Verse 32. When Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they've been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? He said, seven and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. After sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Gadden. Okay. So it's funny to me that the disciples already know, they've already seen him do this miracle before. They've seen him feed a huge amount of people. And yet, again, they come to the same situation and they question him, which is such human. They were Gentiles. They were French. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were French. Well, no, okay. <laughs> they were they were Gentiles. That so, was the that was the key. That was the key. So they're like, really, are you going to feed these Gentile dogs? Yeah. <laughs> so that that's another beautiful picture of of his mirror, his miraculous way of feeding everyone, and they ate until they were satisfied. But one thing that really sticks out to me is that. He blesses the food, right? I mean, he gives credit to our Father, to, to God. In, in, in all that he does, he glorifies God. And, and I think that that's a great example for us that he sets. He tries to get that across. Okay. <clears throat> so, another great chapter. Who has anything that they, any insights that they want to share? The fact that there were Gentiles was my only. Yeah. I was kidding about the French thing. <laughs> Inside joke for that one tonight. <laughs> How about you, William? Did you have something? Yeah. Uh, well, just a little quick note. Uh, when you came across uh, verses 16 through 20, I was reading that footnotes again. But it's interesting how they make that point and it's the way we are deep down where others can't see matters much to God. What do you like inside? When people become Christian, God makes them different on the inside. He'll continue the process of change inside them if they only ask. God wants us to seek healthy thoughts and motives, not just healthy food and exercise. And I, that's a constant battle. When you feel good deep inside and your heart feels clean and you worship God, but then you're fighting off the demons. Your eye falls, tend to fall right back into a, a horrible person, especially listening to, to TV, to the newscaster. So I have to turn it off. <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't dare listen to it. So uh, I feel good if I don't dwell on that kind of stuff. So um, it's an ongoing battle. It's not something that happens and it's done with. It's a constant battle. It absolutely is. It always is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pastor Tom, would you like to pray us out? Sure. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you so much for this evening and, and uh, this message that we received. And help us, Father, to uh, not be so in love with religion uh, and been said that religion is man trying to reach up to you and that uh, Christianity is you reaching down to us. And 
Father, help us to not be legalistic and help us to uh, reach out to people and, and know that your love is for all, no matter what, uh, what race, uh, color, creed, whatever people are, that we are to show your love to them. And uh, Lord, we, th we thank you for your kindness and your goodness and your compassion. And Father, the numbers are just skyrocketing with this COVID thing, and we're, we're, uh, we're very concerned about our people, about our churches, about our country, about our world. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would uh, put your hand of protection on all Christians around the world, and, and even on those non-Christians, Father. Uh, we lift them up to you as well, that they might reach out to you, they might seek you in this time of their uh, of, of, of this terrible plague. Father, we pray that there be quickly be a cure. We pray that as we go before we meet again, uh, there will be an election. And Father, we, uh, we pray that you will help us keep peace in this nation. And the Civil war will not erupt uh, in any way and, and that, uh, that it might be peaceful. Help us to accept whatever the outcome is and to just keep on uh, keeping on for you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, always remembering it's all about you. It's not about us. In Jesus' name we pray until we meet again, Father, we pray that you'd be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John.